Hello and welcome to Johnny on Energy. What we're going to be doing this week is we're going to be insulating a hot water tank. And what I'm standing next to here is a 40 gallon gas hot water tank. You can see down below where the gas line comes in. You can see where the vented you know, fumes go out from the burning of the gas. This is the cold water line coming in. Over here on this side is the hot water line going out. You can actually feel it. It's warm so you can tell the difference between the hot and cold. And what we have here is an R11 insulation blanket that we're going to be putting over the body of this hot water tank. Now why do we want to do that? Why is that worth doing? Well the tank itself has a level of its own insulation. And there's only a couple places here where we can lose heat because we're storing a tank of water here at about 120 to 140 degrees and we can lose heat in two ways. It's being conducted up this hot water pipe and being transitioned up to the pipes. It's also coming directly out of the body of the tank into the air out in this utility room. So what we want to do is we want to put that blanket on which is like a coat for the hot water tank just like your coat keeps your temperature of your body within it. This blanket here is going to keep the temperature of the hot water better contained within the tank itself. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the blanket itself. We'll take a close-up look at its panel and then we'll start kind of going step by step through the process of getting it installed. All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, hot water blanket that we have here. This one's manufactured by Frost King. I picked it up at the local, my local home improvement store. And you can just see water heater insulation blanket, vinyl faced fiberglass. What's important is when you look right here, I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, this is an R value of 11. So it has a pretty solid R value. They had some other ones there that were a lot thinner that were like a three, three and a half R value. But this one really gave you an 11. It says it fits most gas, oil, or electric water heaters up to 60 gallons in size. And since this is a 40, uh, most, gal most hot water tanks are in that 40, 50, 60 range. There's 80s out there. They're not going to carry those at your home center. Probably going to have to custom order it if you got an 80 gallon hot water tank. It does include vinyl tape to help you out with the uh, insulation and uh, kind of notes as we're doing here it improves your overall energy efficiency. They do tell you on a gas one to not take it all the way up to the center. You're basically only hitting the edges of the top of the tank, not insulating the top. So let's go ahead and get prepared to put this in. All right, as we get started, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the overflow drain pipe. And just so you know, this is, you can see this is just a plastic tube going to the floor. There's a drain in the floor. There's a pressure valve here. So if too much pressure builds up in the hot water tank, what it's going to do is open this valve and actually pour the water out on the floor so the tank itself doesn't rupture. It's, and you have a real problem then. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this tube for now because we're going to cut a hole in here and put the tube back on so that the insulation sits more right up against the body of the tank in this area. So this is a pretty easy thing to do here. I'm just going to take my wrench and get the uh, pipe loosened up a bit. And then I'm going to be able to unscrew it off of there by hand. And there we are, we'll set this aside. All right, now we're getting ready to put this all in. And one of the things the instructions told us is to clean and wipe down with water the top of the hot water tank. The reason for that is they're all dusty and dirty and it's hard for the tape to stick to that. So I've got a damp cloth here. Pretty simply, I'm gonna wash this guy down off the surface here to make sure we got a good adhesion surface. Get that all scrubbed off, get some any dust and dirt on there so our tape has a surface to adhere to. Then I've got another dry rag and I'm just going to wipe that all down to make sure we've got a nice adhesion. So if that tape's popping off on you, it's going to kind of drive you nuts. And it's just a simple layer of dust that's sitting on your hot water tank from being in your utility room for a long time. All right, we've taken the insulation out of its bag. Let's show you what this blanket looks like. It's got a vinyl exterior on it. It's somewhat tough, but it can get torn, so you want to be careful with that. And then all your insulation is on the interior here. I'll just be careful not to touch that too much. But just like in your house, this is the exact same fiberglass insulation you have in your ceilings and in your walls. So we're going to put this insulation around this tank. And the way it's going to go in, I want to show you some heights and so forth is keep in mind, you might look at this long dimension and go, wow, that's too tall. It's actually the short dimension. It sits here in this 
excess plastic, that's why we cleaned the top, is going to come up over the top. So our trickiest part is going to be in this case, because it's right up against the wall, getting it out behind the wall and behind the pipes. We might not torture you with showing you all that dragging it through, but we'll kind of start it out and kind of go from there. All right, I'm gonna start trying to get this back behind the water heater. Like I said, in this case, I got plumbing back there, I got gas plumbing back there, and our first step is kind of get it wrapped around because we gotta get its overlap dimension out of it. Its height's good, actually, to the height of the hot water tank. So I'm basically just working it around the back. I got some pipes back here, so that's where it's gonna get fun to get it all pulled out through here. And obviously we're going to have some cutting and trimming to do later on. Oh, look at that. Not too tough. <laughs> we've got this whole thing in here. Like I said, we've got some pipes around the back. And I'm kind of working around. Down around that gas pipe. <coughs> and we do have a gas line around the side and so forth. So we're going to open up for that. Now I kind of want my scene to be over here on the side so it's not kind of blowing you know not out in the open it is only insulation but we want it to look nice and pretty interestingly with this tank they've done a pretty exacting fit we have to cut around the pipes in that a little bit but we're actually in pretty good shape on overall dimension so we actually don't have to do a whole lot of cutting on this so let me get it positioned a little lower here This guy a little bit so my seams on the side. This guy pushed down and around the pipes in the back. A little wrestling, but we're in there. We're gonna have to cut some holes in the front and so forth to make it fit right, and then we'll start taping things together. All right, now I want to point something out here. To get a tight fit up against here, we have a gas supply line in this case that's wrapping around this flex tube here is wrapping around the hot water tank. So there's not a whole lot we can do to kind of move that around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slit in the hot water blanket here so that the hot water blanket will go over that. We're going to have to cut out around this whole gas area anyways. This is going to be entirely open up here, but I want to allow the blanket to have a slit in it to kind of fall back down into place so that everything when it pulls up tight we get a nice tight fit onto the whole thing. Now I, don't want, I want to be careful not to cut the gas line itself so what I'm going to do is I can see exactly where that's sitting here and I got a little position to that guy out here that I can feel and I'm going to give myself a little index mark in there and then I'm going to cut that through very easily to actually wrap right around that line. Good. All right, so what you see here is I put this slit in here. We've got the pipe sticking out on the outside. Once we get everything cut in place, we'll go back in and we'll tape this seam up with some of the tape that came with it to kind of keep that area sealed and be really tight on there. All right, and you also remember that earlier we removed the pipe from this pressure relief valve because we want this to be on the outside of the uh, insulation. So we're gonna have to cut a little hole in there too. So I've got my hole cut in there. I'm going to tighten myself up here. I know exactly where this thing is so it's pretty easy. I'm just going to cut a little hole in there and that'll allow us to open that up and get it right up around there and then we'll reattach that hose or the pipe that goes downward when we're all done with everything else. Now it is. Okay, this, uh, the tank's wrap, the blanket, came with this long strip of tape for us to seal up seams and so forth. So we cut a six inch piece because we're going to put it across here to hold things. I'm only going to put the upper one on right now because we got to get that bottom cut out so that th it's not going to really fit. But I want this one to hold everything in place so that I can cut out around the gas tank and then bring it all together. So let me go ahead and pull this off of here. It's got a little backing on it. Just got to be careful that that doesn't get stuck. I'm holding this thing with my arm. And I'm just going to get this across the first seam like that. Ta-da! So now I can step away and work on cutting away the, the part of the door.